You've probably heard people talk about the order of an algorithm before. I know that in my first semester classes, we talk about sorts, and I say that the sorts that we're talking about, the bubble sort, selection sort, and insertion sort, are order in squared. Uh, the sequential search is order in, and the binary search is order log in. But we're not real specific about what that means at that point. Uh, we kind of wave our hands around and say it gives you an idea of how the amount of work changes with the size of an input. It's time to be more specific about what it actually means for something to be of a particular order. Now, the first thing that we'll look at is the formal mathematical definition. So, G of N here is where you've actually gone and measured the amount of work that a program or part of a program does for an input size N. Now, when we talk about measuring the amount of work, we generally don't talk about time because in some ways time is too poorly defined. Uh, time will run differently on different computers. It depends upon a lot of details of the hardware. What we're really caring about here is how many times particular operations are performed. So <clears throat> we might pick one or more different operations. In the case of sorting, a standard operation to count would be the number of comparisons that you do between elements. Or we could also consider the number of, mo of memory moves. Okay? How often do we copy things around? And you can actually get different orders for the same algorithm depending upon what operation it is that you're counting. We say that that is of order f of n if there exists some values m and c such that c times f of n is greater than g of n for all m, n, n greater than m. Well, what does that really mean? Well, that means that there's some point m and some constant c where this function is multiplied by some constant is always bigger than the amount of work that the program is doing. It probably helps to look at this pictorially. So here's a possible plot. The solid line is kind of a measure of how much work the algorithm actually did. Note, it doesn't have to be smooth. Things can jump around a little bit depending upon the inputs or, or whatnot, but it kind of has a general trend to it. C times F of N is a smoother function. It's the dotted line here. In this case, I happen to pick a quadratic function. You can probably tell that this is, is a parabola there. Uh, there's this multiplier, we don't know what it is, there's no labels on on these axes, but beyond this point here, which is labeled m, c times f of n is always greater than g of n. That's what this math basically states. So this order here is kind of an, an upper bound. It is saying that we will not do more work than than this. The other thing to note about order here is that it only matters for large values of n. We refer to this as an asymptotic analysis. It's not really relevant for small input sizes. It's, it's most significant to us at very large input sizes. And so those are some significant things to remember about order. Also, since technically the big O is only an upper bound, a lot of times what people really mean is something slightly different, which is a, a capital theta, which is both an, or, uh, an upper and a lower bound. But we often just say big O, if nothing else. It's a lot easier to type. It's on your keyboard. In the case of our stack in Q, we are actually going to require that all operations be what is called order one. Okay, and so picturing this in our plot here, order one means that there should be a constant line that is always above the number of operations that that happens. Okay, so in other words, the number of operations should not grow within. Any real growth with, with the size of the input would make it so that it was not order one. And that's the one thing that we're going to absolutely require for our stacks and our queues in order for us to consider them to be 
uh, appropriately efficient.